Hey designer, Alex here, welcome to the channel and in today's video I'm going to show you 5 different tips for Adobe XD which are going to help you improve your workflow and increase your speed. Before we get started with today's video, make sure to check out my membership, link is going to be down in the description below. Membership contains all of my courses, design products, private access to the Facebook group, mentorship and much more. So if you're interested, make sure to check it out. Once again, link is going to be in the description below. Now let's get started with today's video. Okay, so let's jump inside Adobe XD and here I have opened uh, my chatty UI kit and you guys are familiar with the chatty UI kit because I uh, already mentioned it a couple of times, but here it is and you can get it, the link is going to be down in the description below if you want to or you can simply join the membership, it's going to be there as well. So the first, first tip for today is going to be about stacks and if you don't know, stacks are this amazing feature of Adobe XD which is going to help you massively increase your speed and you can reorganize these elements however you want. So to jump back to Adobe XD, uh, here it is and I'm going to show you on one of these screens. So for example, let's go to this screen and if I zoom in just a little bit closer, now, what you can do is you can reorganize stacks however you want. So, for example, you can put all of these images into one stack, then you can put this text uh, into separate stack, and you can put all together into one single stack. So, let me show you. If I jump inside of here, you can see that we have all of these elements combined. So, let's first things first, uh, put this text inside of a stack, and to do that, simply click right here. Now, you can put the distance here manually, you can click right here to drag and it will increase the distance. But as I said, you can simply put it on manually if you want to. And for example, if I set it up to, let's say 80, as you can see, it's going to scale it down to 80. So let's control Z that. And as I said, you can put these two elements inside of a group. So control G and you can put it inside of a stack like that. So you can see that it recognizes its 10 uh, distance because the text and image are 10. Now what you can do with stacks is you can simply click right here to drag and you can see it's going to reorganize this stack however you want. And you can also put it like this, which is going to put it inside of the ver vertical stack if that's something that you want. Let's bring it back to horizontal. And what I'm going to do, as you can see, is put it uh, inside of a group. So you can rename that group if you want to. Let's go ahead and put these images inside of a stack. So control G and I can call it images, for example, like that. And I can come right here to my stack panel and you can see the distance is seven. So what I can do is click on one of them. So let's select this one, for example, hover and select. And I can change just this one image. Or if I go back and hold my shift key, and simply increase the spacing for all of them. You can see what that does. And alternatively, you can simply select the group images in this case and simply enter a value, for example, 20. Now, finally, let's put this uh, all into one single stack. So you can see we have this uh, top information, we have our images, and finally we have our icons at the bottom. So this is the post number one. I'm going to put all of it in a stack and let's see what that does. So. If I select this group, you can see the distance is 20. If I select this, the distance is 20. So once again, I can jump inside this. You can see distance is 20. So if I increase it, it's going to be 40. And finally, what stacks are great for is to replace the positioning of your layers. So for example, I can replace these images and I can put them to the top like this. And it's going to put this information at the bottom. So these are stacks in a nutshell. So basically you can do whatever you want with them and I highly encourage encourage you to check them out and to test them out. So the next feature which we are going to explore is the repeat grid. And of course, this feature is well known inside of Adobe XD, but I wanted to show you uh, a repeat grid here uh, in a bit more advanced manner because majority of people just know how to put uh, images inside of a repeat grid or these cards or stuff like that, but let's include some information. So let's go back to Adobe XD right away. And here I have this uh, screen. So what I have right here is avatar and I have these text files inside. What I can do is I can simply ungroup my text files if I want to, or I can keep all of them in, but I want to ungroup them and simply keep it like that. Now to uh, introduce a repeat grid, you can simply click right here and you can simply drag how many, however many copies you want. And you can simply reduce these to somewhere around here, for example, and let's hide uh, this nav bar at the bottom to see where our repeat grid is and I can simply close it off right around here. 
Now, obviously, what I can do is I can simply bring in my images if I want to. I can simply drag and drop. And the point of repeat grid is uh, always make sure to make your first selection. So in this case, we uh, created one item, so person one, and then we uh, created the repeat grid. So don't make a mistake and create multiple variations, multiple items, and then create repeat grid. Just create one and then create repeat grid and then start adding information. So if I jump right here to my desktop, I have this folder with avatars, which I already prepared. I'm going to drag and drop it. Here is how that looks like. I'm going to simply select Select all of my images, drag and drop them into my first image right here. And this is the key. So you have to drop them in the first image. And when I let go and click right here, you can see that it puts them like so. Now, obviously, the uh, organization is not that well. So let's quickly click, for example, right here to add this to here. And you can manually, obviously, replace these images as you go. So let's see which one we don't have. So for some reason, I have two of these. So that's why it uh, confused it. So let's include this guy right here. And now we are good to go. Now, one great thing about repeat grid is you can inc introduce um, these text items. So here I have just this notepad document with all of these names inside. What I can do is simply bring that uh, names document right here to the first name. Once again, always to the first name. Let it go. It's going to fill in and you can see that we have all of these lined around correctly. Now, these two uh, need to be replaced. So let's bring Anne. So this image, let's bring it down to the bottom and let's bring this guy right here. And there we go. And finally, what we have is we have this uh, indicator. So online, offline, I created one for that as well. So if I drag and drop, you can see online, online, offline, 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 online, just to give it some variation. So basically that's it for the repeat grid. Now let's move on to the dot grid and you can simply create these pixel grids if you want to. And they are really quite simple to create. So let's jump inside of this artboard, for example, if I click on my layout, you can see it brings up columns. But if I switch it to square, you can see that we have all of these squares. Now by default, Adobe XD works with eight point grid, what you can see right here. So what that means in purpose is if you switch on that eight point grid, what that brings you uh, in return is you can nudge all of these elements by eight pixels. So basically what I can do is if I hit shift and right arrow, for example, it's going to move it eight pixels to the right. If I do control Z and if I select my artboard once again, go back and select 10, for example, and then hit shift and left arrow. Once I select here and right arrow, sorry, it's going to move it into 10 pixel increments. But if I go it the other way around, if I set it to four, for example, because I know a lot of designers like to work with full pixel grid, when you select it, hit shift, right arrow is going to move it just four pixels to the right. So that's really handy to know if you're working with these grids and if you're interested in these sort of things rather than just columns. So if you're working, for example, for Android apps, using eight pixel grid is really important because majority of Android uh, operating system is built on the eight point grid. The next thing is for renaming your layers. So we've all done it. We've all been there. We have gone ahead and finished the project, but we forgot to name all of our layers because developers really need to uh, have all of those layers named. So what you can do to increase your speed just a little bit is you can use certain plugins, but uh, chances are plugins are going to make some mistakes. So uh, the best thing to do really is to do this manually. But how can you increase your speed when you're doing this thing manually? So let me quickly show you. Here I am in Adobe XD and let me quickly select this uh, artboard, for example, because I know I have all of these elements are named. So what I can do is simply double click right here to go into enter mode. And this enter mode is basically there to help you navigate your way around. So uh, when you double click right here, you can go ahead and straight from here, change the name of your layer. So I can call it, for example, circle like this and press enter. But when I do that, I have to double click once again on this spot and then do that all the way down. But there is a quicker method. So for example, I know that this is my pot and instead of clicking, I can simply hit tab 
it's going to go to the layer down. So let's see what this is. This is, for example, path number two. I can hit tab once again, it's going to go one down. But if you need to go up, you can then hit shift tab. It's going to go into enter mode, so into edit mode, so you can actually edit your text. And you can hit shift tab once again, it's going to go up again. So once again, tab to go down, as you can see, and simply rename it. So circle, for example, this is going to be small circle like that hit tab it's going to go down and this for example pot but what if i need to rename my pot number one i can simply hit shift tab go to it and call it pot number one so that's how easy it is to create that and finally the last tip for this video is to always preview your designs. Now, when you're creating web designs, it's much simpler because you're creating for the web and you can always simply um, check what it is. And for example, if I go back to here, you can use this preview and you can uh, desktop preview and check out and see what it looks like on the web. But what if you're creating for the mobile? then the best thing to do is to use your real device. So let me show you that. Let's go back to Adobe XD. If I hover right here, you can see and click preview on device. So to enable live preview uh, on iOS, download the latest version of iTunes and connect to your device via USB. To preview on Android, uh, you have to do the same thing, but you have to download the XD mobile app. What that does is, it's going to allow you to access your XD files no matter where you are through your cloud library. So if we go back to Adobe XD, you can see that this file is saved uh, to the cloud. And really this has to work through the cloud only, but you're connecting your USB because Adobe XD team still hasn't found a way to fix those issues. Now, how that looks like, if I show you right here on the real uh, project. So if I open it up, you can see that I have my XD app right here. I can open it up. And if I go right here, you can see that this is Chatty UI Kit. So if you go back to here, you can see Chatty UI Kit right here at the top, hopefully. And if I click to open it, now, depending of how big your project is, how many artboards you have, how many options you have, how many transitions you have, your file is going to grow and grow. So depending on that, it's going to be uh, faster or slower to connect to your device. So let's go back to our device. You can see triple tap to access menu, and we have some fonts missing right here at the bottom, but I'm just going to close it. Now, at the moment, I don't have any uh, any animations, any transactions on this particular uh, design, because this is a UI kit that we created. But as you can see, you can simply swipe through your screens and it's going to switch. And basically whatever you are doing, uh, if I set, for example, cut height right here, if I set scrollable group, if I set all of those elements, it's going to work just fine. But what I want to show you for the end is this. So you can triple tap the menu and you have all of these options. So you can swap to navigate, you can hotspot hints. What that basically means is if you're sharing this with your client, for example, if you're sharing this document with them through the cloud, because once again, this is a cloud document and they have the Adobe XD app, they can simply open it up. And these hints are there for them to help them navigate throughout the app, because it's not obvious, for example, especially for some people, where do they need to click inside of these apps? So hotspot hints are really helpful to do that. And if we switch back, you can see share this screen as an image. We have voice notifications, especially important if you're, if you're working with voice uh, designs. We have swipe to navigate, as I said, browse files and artboards. So you can click right there and you can see all of your artboards, which are located inside of your document. And you can switch to one of these, for example, this one, I can triple tap once again, and I can browse file uh, files and flows. So if you have multiple flows, you can add them. And for example, let's go to this one, but you can always swipe back and forward. Now, these are some of the tips which I really like to use in my day to day workflow. And I really hope you enjoyed them. If you did, make sure to hit that like button to make sure that YouTube algorithm shows this video to uh, other designers who might find it helpful. Make sure to subscribe because I upload new videos every single week on Adobe XD on passive income techniques on design tips and much, much more. So if you're interested, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.